What up, y'all? Welcome back to the Friends of Strangers podcast. Um, this episode was super dope, man. This episode was special. This episode, I hope, inspires others. Um, I was blessed and honored to have my brother on here, Volatile Producer MC. If any of y'all know, we got some extensive history. Um, yeah, we did a lot. Um, and to be able to speak to him now was just really a blessing. So um, we get into his bringing up, his um, his inspirations, how he became Volatile Producer MC, and it's the reason why Producer is first. So I just hope y'all enjoy. I hope y'all inspired. Um, it was emotional for me. I didn't, I held it together though, but um, I just, I'm thankful. So I hope y'all enjoy. Peace. All right, all right, all right. Um, I got I got a little worried when I was like, when I when I listened to the Moses one and you were like, oh yeah, I did a little uh, research, a little homework. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's weird looking up people you know, man, I'm telling you. That's what you said. I'm like, Super yeah, I would weird. imagine. <laughs> but just in your case, you, you've always, um, you're like King Bio guy. You, could, <laughs> you literally could be like uh, uh, one of those writers for like artists. Write a professional bio. Yeah, your bio game is fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I always been a always been a good writer. Those school or whatever. All right, so um, we about to get started. Welcome to the Friends and Strangers podcast. I go by the name of Lava the Fresh Nerd. Um, local MC from Rochester, New York. Um, diving got a lot of things that I'm up to these days. Um, I just so happen to have somebody super dope with me right now. I won't say who yet. Um, the way I start these off is I ask two questions and I kind of want to get your intake or not your intake, your perspective on them. And then we'll get into who you are and all of that good stuff. First question is, who is one stranger that you would say you're proud of or inspired you? All right, all right. Um, peace, first of all, and thanks for having me. Having me. Um, so let's see, a stranger that I'm inspired by, and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm proud to say I'm inspired by. Um, me, hip hop wise, I would say, uh, you know, Pete Rock, DJ Premier, um, mm-hmm. are definitely my guys on as far as like that inspired, like soul of my production and like me getting into into production which ultimately is the first part of me that like got into doing hip-hop so mm. uh, you know those are probably the first couple guys that uh that i would mention okay that's dope that's dope um all right who was one friend that you would say you're proud of or inspired you um t- man this is there's definitely a lot. Um, I mean, not to be all all mushy right off the bat, but uh, you definitely are, are one of them and definitely a big part of uh, me as who I am and who I, you know, my path to being a, a better MC and, and even producer and, and uh, music creator, mm. uh, you know, having somebody to uh, collab with and, and, and bounce ideas and, and kind of grow artistically with for an extended period of time is definitely uh something that's you know a big part of my inspiration big part of my my artistry man i appreciate so, that so I'm, I'm gonna go there right off the bat <laughs> I, I hope i can make it through this without crying because um i turned into a big softy but nah, <laughs> I, I appreciate that man and it's super vice versa amongst many other things um, no doubt, not just man. not just music, but um, life in general. Um, we'll, we'll definitely get into that, though. Um, word, word. So, with all that being said, um, kind of introduce yourself to the world. Let them know who you are, and I want to just—you kind of hinted at it, but um, kind of talk to about volatile at the beginning, like his path of kind of getting into this music. You can even go childhood if if you want to, but. Um, I think I, I really want to introduce the world to Volatile because I feel like kind of like the Rock's hidden gem for it. You've been that way for a long time, so. No doubt, no doubt. I appreciate that, that sentiment. Um, of course, my phone will be ringing, right? <laughs> um, so, 
my, you know, obviously my, my path to uh, hip hop started quite a while ago. Um, I was, uh, I, I didn't grow up on hip hop. Mm. Um, you know, I was only child. Um, my, uh, my parents didn't listen to hip hop. So, um, okay. I, I grew up on pretty much classic rock and, and, um, you know, whatever was on the, on the radio and stuff that they were playing. Um, so as far as, uh, me getting into hip hop, that came from, uh, you know, being probably about 12, um, and starting to obviously grow up and kind of come into my own as a, uh, you know, uh, young man, I guess, young teenager. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously then, you know, kind of influenced by, by what my friends were listening to more. So therefore it was put on to different things. And obviously I gravitated towards, uh, you know, towards hip hop. And um, some of the first things that, um, you know, that I was put on to was like, uh, this was like 98, 97, okay. 98. So like on the radio, it was like Will Smith getting jiggy with it. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it but then like the, it was like Wu and, uh, you know, DMX had just dropped, you know, around then. And like, it was Rough Riders. It was stuff like that. So it was like mm-hmm. a lot of different things to digest, especially as someone who was like new to hip hop. So, um, you know, af- after that, I obviously I ended up kind of doing my homework and going back and, and listening to stuff that that I didn't experience at the time when it came out, gotcha. um, you know, and that that kind of came later in my uh, my hip hop existence, I guess you'll say. <laughs> um, so you, go ahead, I'm sorry. So anyhow, as far as the, you know, that's my my start into to even liking hip hop. Um, but as far as like me actually making hip hop. Um, that started a couple years later, probably. I think it was maybe eighth grade. Okay. Um, after I had kind of been around, so this is like middle school, you know. So seventh and eighth grade, I was in a in a in a one particular middle school. So I was with the same people. So I was with people who when we were exchanging hip hop. You know, we were listening to all we were listening to was hip hop. So then, obviously, a couple people started getting into making beats, and they had the bootleg uh, version of FL Studio Fruity Loops at the time. It was like mm. FL3, <laughs> you know, so they had the the, the downloaded one from, uh, from uh, Morpheus Lime or something Lime like that, yeah. Something, you know what I'm saying? Bear Share or whatever. But uh, so, you know, we just passed in that software around, and, uh, you know, that was, so that was the start of, uh, of like, making our own beats. And, uh, you know, I used to be in a friend of mine's basement and, man, he, he just had the whole setup. He had the, the speakers rigged up, you know, it was it's so incredibly like as bootleg as you could possibly imagine. It, right. Know, it was, right. It was and it was like, it, like, you know, what, what more, like how, how more perfectly could you describe like a, a like start of an infatuation with hip hop, right. Is like being in that kind of environment. So. I don't know. And, and, you know, I just kind of grew with it uh, from there. Obviously, all the first stuff I made was horrible. Uh, <laughs> and it was, you know, it was like all the stock sounds from uh, from the program and that like we're not even talking about getting into sampling yet. So like, you know, eventually starting to understand that. But um, and then, and man, as far as rapping goes, I didn't start rapping actually until quite a while after that, really like 10th grade. Um, so it was, you know, at least a couple years, two, three years where I was really just making beats and Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't really, I hadn't crossed that path yet, (laughs) you know, until I'm, uh, until I was around it more, I guess you could say, but, um, but yeah, so, uh, well, you, I feel like you had a question. Yeah, I got a couple, but one is, um, you were born and raised Rochester, New York, right? Yeah, city, yeah, yeah. So, so born in the city. Yep, yep. Rochester General. Um, so that I, I want to go back to like V as a child. That um, kind of that feeling that like was like drawing you to hip hop. I know it had to. Um, you said you didn't grow up on it, so I know it had to kind of be like. Was it something you were kind of hiding from the folks, or um, like what was that kind of like? A, a young guy rebellious in a sense to what his parents trying to put on how did that dynamic feel and then how was that dynamic towards your friends because um 
I mean, I don't, you are um, Caucasian. <laughs> so like, I, from what I know of you, I, um, you've kind of always been around just the culture. So like, how did that, <laughs> that, that dynamic play in the part too? Um, so let's see. All right. So I look at myself like this in my, my upbringing has always been like, I feel like incredibly well-rounded and, and, and diverse and, and the things that I've been able to experience. And I feel very blessed to be able to say that because I mm -hmm. feel like it's contributed to my character as a, a, a person, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so as far as, um, me getting into hip hop, I would say, even though my parents didn't like get into it, mm -hmm. like with me necessarily, <laughs> they didn't like tell me not to, or, or like, you know, they were, they were rather accepting. I would like, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I would say they were probably really accepting because, uh, everything that came into fruition, they, they allowed, I mean, from me, uh, you know, for me being home alone as like a 13 year old and them coming home from like grocery shopping and I'm blasting <laughs> like, you know, pro, kind of rather profane hip hop <laughs> and, uh, you know, them accepting that all the way to the fact that like, you know, having the first, uh, you know, bootleg studio in my bedroom and having people over rapping, you know, yeah, so yeah. they always, um, they always respected all of that. So I'm definitely, uh, thankful for that. And, uh, you know, probably should probably just say it more actually now that I no. think about it. <laughs> but uh yeah, they definitely they they didn't uh they didn't get on my case about much of that. So got you, got you. Because that um, was my introduction. As, yeah, my but that was sorry, my introduction sorry. to you was somebody bringing me to your studio. Yeah, yeah, literally, literally, literally came <laughs> to the to the to bootleg, you know, mm -hmm. first studio. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I mean that's how a lot of looking back now, that's how a lot of relationships uh, formed, and you know, everything could kind of be traced to like that root. So it's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, like as far as as far as being white myself, I don't know. I know I, I didn't. I guess I never really worried about it that much myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess at the same time, around that time, you had guys like like Eminem who, um, you know, inevitably regardless of my personal feelings on Eminem or, or, or fandom, which is not that high personally, but <laughs> he did have an impact on the culture in that regard. So, right, right. Uh, you know, and I, I did listen to his music. I, I wasn't as heavily influenced by it as, as, you know, maybe some of my peers and stuff, but, um, you know, I definitely respect like his contributions to the culture. And I think, I think that, that, that certainly influenced, uh, you know, people, but not to say that he was the first one either, because uh, he was more so the first one mainstream that that I knew about. Because, like I said, at that time, when he dropped, all I had really was what I was fed through uh, the TV and, and the, the radio. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't actually uh, till I got to high school that people put me on uh, to like more underground and, and like more old school stuff. And that was really when I um, went back and kind of studied more the root and more the 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 different um the different types of hip-hop subgenres of hip-hop really yeah uh, yeah and, and that actually is really essentially what made me want to rhyme because mm. uh, the stuff on the radio didn't necessarily make me want to rhyme <laughs> right <laughs> i mean like i admit my you know the first you know rhymes i was writing didn't have much content so it was more like kind of repeating what i uh had heard and you know some of mm -hmm. it was like flashy nonsense whatever like you know stuff i heard on the radio whatever as a as a 16 year old kid you know right right um, but anyhow I don't know. I, I think I went on a tangent. Uh, <laughs> did that fully answer your question? It did. I mean, that's the beauty about podcasting. You kind of don't. It's guys, easy like, to get lost. Yeah. And I, I always appreciate like, those yeah. moments. But, um, Word. yeah, so we, uh, hence volatile producer MC. I've always noticed that you, you threw that producer in first. Um, so that's that the kinda, reason I tell people that that's yeah. the reason because that's where it started. So, um, in terms of your like the producing part, um, you said you was influenced by Pete Rock, Premier. Um, 
you oh I've, I know like unfortunately for those that don't know um this is my brother um but <laughs> you, you've always been drawn to like um I guess major keys in a sense horns um it's like it I can hear the sampling part from Premiere and Pete Rock but there's also like another aspect of volatile beats that I, I can't say where it's pulled from. And I kind of want you to speak to that because um, I've never seen nobody cut a beat the way you cut a beat. <laughs> or as far as like cutting up the sample and like yeah, chopping it. Just the way your, your approach to it. Yeah, man. You know, my, I don't know, my, I'm real, I always tell people I'm real stuck in my ways as far as like my process goes. And I'm like big on, I don't know if it's not broke, don't fix it, you know? So mm -hmm. my, my process is like, I, I essentially do the work of like a machine, <laughs> but like manually, you know what I'm saying? Essentially right. that's what I do. But then I sit there and I'll put everything, I guess this may be OCD or my, just my meticulous nature, but uh, <laughs> you know, I put everything in, in folders, but like, uh, it's funny. I was telling, um, I was telling Aaron, Burris the other day when he was over for a session and uh I'm like because we were chopping up something he had me doing some work for him and uh I was like yeah I got basically every folder every sample that I've ever chopped up and like sometimes I'll go back if I'm bored or like I got you know producer block or whatever I'll just go back and I'll just you know click on samples and it's mm -hmm. literally just folders on folders of samples like um uh, like gigs gigabytes Mm -hmm. uh, like maybe I, if I'm lucky, maybe I can sell it one day and be straight. Right. <laughs> we'll right. When you think about I play, it, if I play these cars right. But but real talk though, yeah. I mean that's like a real like capital or equity when you think about it. Absolutely, absolutely. But anyhow, my point is like creatively, I'll go back there and I'll just mess around, and sometimes I make like random, actually dope beats off of just you know kind of scraps almost that are just random i don't know so <laughs> it's just my <laughs> process but yeah as far as chopping it up man i think i think in creating music and really why i like when i got into beats at you know 12 or 13 why i really like got in, got a mastery of it and like mm -hmm. continue to work on it is just kind of my nature because I'm I'm meticulous and I'm a learner and like that was just something that really drew me in. So I think I just I don't know the <laughs> whole the whole pro the, just the whole process of of creation like that and I don't know I definitely love it. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's like fire. Um, so you you mentioned you was the only child. Um. Looking back, can you see how that might have affected any of your your style, um, producing wise, hip hop, like uh, music wise, um, maybe some pros, some cons against it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I I don't have. I don't know. I don't think I have any particular feelings towards like wanting to like have you know been a sibling or. I don't know. I mean, people people like to jump to like the oh, you're only child. Oh, you must have been spoiled. <laughs> you know, like my passions is more important than like anything they ever bought me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like, I wouldn't necessarily have considered us like you know, well off. Um, you know, we did okay, but like, you know, it wasn't. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going with that. <laughs> but, um, you you did mention, and I noticed about you, but um, you you mentioned that you have pretty much like every sample that you ever chopped up. That speaks yeah. to like a organization level that's like ten thousand. Um, I think I, I, that like some of that probably stems from like being an only child and like kind of the level of like self-occupation that it takes sometimes when you're mm -hmm. on the job so like for instance um 
like, I don't know, my room was always pretty organized. Like my, my toys and stuff was always pretty organized. Like I was, I was a collector, Mm -hmm. um, you know, stuff like that. So like, yeah, that all kind of speaks to that, like that, that nature, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know your writing styles. Um, it's it's pretty organized as well in terms of not the way you may say things, but the the structure of how you place your bars and the importance of certain schemes and pockets, um, which I think a lot of people might overlook. Um, but kind yeah, of speaks. I, I definitely think so. <laughs> kind of speak to like how that developed. Man, yeah, that like I said, I've always I've always been a like a a good writer. I've always uh, like I have always done pretty well in like English class. Always done well on like writing essays in school and everything. So I don't know. I guess I've always just had like that ability to put words together. Mm-hmm. Um, like on paper, my hurdle was like rap actually rapping them because I was like more so shy than anything you know I was the kid with the good grades but like the shy kid you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah yeah uh, more so kept to myself and, and you know maybe some of that is, is is part of the only child uh you know upbringing too mm-hmm. um, you know kind of shaped me into that person but like um that's why I give a lot of credit to to hip-hop and like kind of break helping me break out of my my shell you know as far as interacting and like being able to uh to entertain people is like a whole different a whole different thing than what i would have expected as like knowing myself as a kid you know being shy and like to like you know speak up or like you know i wasn't like the jokester like i always admired like the, the class clowns like you know ability to like just make people laugh you know what i'm saying yeah like that type of thing. control the room in a sense yeah yeah exactly like i um yeah i didn't necessarily feel like i had that until like i got confident within hip-hop really mm. you know and then i think that kind of translated into other things in my adulthood you know honestly yeah yeah so, I guess, I mean, there's many of us that can say hip hop kind of raises. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's like, I'm big on like transferable skills and like acquiring them from like whatever whatever you do. Like, you mm-hmm. know, I think there's stigma in, in like, you know, certain things that you've done maybe don't belong on your resume or like, you know, certain things like, like you know, I wouldn't necessarily, I don't know, word it like, hip hop artist on my resume <laughs> professionally, you know what I'm saying? But, but there's a lot of transferable skills there. Right. Right. That really do apply to the real world when you think about it. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of bugged out how, yeah, it, it really is like, like hip hop raising you in a sense. Yeah. We don't think about all of hip hop as it's like, so it's kind of like a way of life. It's a culture, so to speak. And, um, you don't realize how open it is because it's not just for the brash, super tough guy. It's also for the little quiet nerd that might read a couple books and comic books growing up or the quiet kid. Like it's it's open and it's room for anyone to grow into something else, which is kind of dope when you think about it. I mean, I think that's what the arts is supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, when you know it's an expression. Um, So um, let's get into some of these projects. All right, like I'm speeding along, but um, I'm I'm going right to twenty. Good, I'm sure I'm I'm positive we'll reach a couple tangents. (laughs) It'll take up plenty of time. Let's go. (laughs) Um, Twenty second letter. All right. Um, you sitting around and uh. Where, what happened? How did that start? Like, <laughs> give, give me the birth of that baby. Like, oh man, I, that there's a lot to that record. So obviously, uh, so that came out in 2018. I put out in 2018. It's about to be three years mm-hmm. uh, in May. Can we call that like your debut? I would definitely yeah, solo absolutely, joint. Yeah, absolutely. Would call that my debut debut solo joint. And it's funny because. Uh, I mean, you can attest to this, how many 
how many people pressured me over the years to uh, when are we getting a, a V solo? Right. right? We get a right. V solo. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that was that was definitely like what I would consider my first official solo release. Um, and I, you know, so that was off the cuff of um, kind of not. Uh, for a while, I guess I would say I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, so, you know, back in 2015, obviously the group I was in, we were in. Uh, yeah, a jerk. For the, folks, for the folks that don't know, I'm sure we'll get more into this a little bit. But, uh, you know, the group was no more. And we have both uh, going in different directions. And mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do because <laughs> I want to keep rapping, but um, I don't have any material to perform <laughs> because right. I, put on, you know, I was like, all my songs are group songs. Like we had just put out a project recently. So it was like all the new stuff that was fresh and like exciting was like, oh man, okay. Yeah, so it had it was, to be was, super disruptive. It was a little disruptive, a little disruptive um, it's from a creative standpoint. And like, I don't know, was, I guess kind of coming, I had to like come down from this high because I was always excited about like, you know, release uh, that we had and like obviously the, obviously the work that went into it. Mm -hmm. um, so like, it was kind of deflating, I guess, to like not have it go anywhere. Mm. So I guess I kind of struggled for a little bit, wondering like, should I keep even making music, you know, because I felt like I really had to kind of start from scratch. You know, I had, you know, like some old mixtape solo stuff, but I'm like, I'm not going to go out and like try to promote and perform this stuff. I'm like, so I really got to decide, do I want to start from scratch <laughs> and, and, you know, um, continue on. So anyhow, I, before 22nd letter, before I dropped that, I did this series called 16, 16 for 16. And that was basically me, forcing myself to put something out every month. Um, mm. It ended up being, it ended up being 11, 11 joints, but anyways, it was 16, 16 total. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it ended up being 11 songs, but uh, you know, it forced me to, to stay on creating something new every month. Mm -hmm. And uh, once I was done with all of it, I put it together as a whole and, you know, kind of spun it as a whole. And then I had a couple of opportunities where I went um, and did a, a couple of shows and a couple open mics. And I guess I, I, I was essentially kind of trying out. It was like a trial period, mm -hmm. like the, the sampler plate at the restaurant. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was like, how is this going to be received? How am I going to feel about it? Right. Um, really on both ends, you know, it was like, how are people going to receive uh, volatile solo material? What am I going to talk about? I don't got mm -hmm. nobody to talk about it with, so I'm just going <laughs> to, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. all these, all these uh, things I'm trying to figure out as an artist now. But um, but anyway, so, you know, I did it and I, I guess I discovered that I was still passionate about it, um, you know, and um, getting feedback from the joints that I was doing um, and still also at the same time still being connected to it and I guess I still had all the connections that I had in the group mm -hmm. as far as like people go and networking and shows and in different like opportunities like that so I was able to still kind of stay in the fold yeah so that definitely helped and then that I think that that was kind of what helped propel me to you know, continue with material is, you know, having those opportunities. I think if, if at the same time where I didn't have any material, I didn't have any opportunities, you know, maybe right. we'd be talking a different story um, because it, then it would be like, you know, nothing going on at, at all at once. But anyhow, um, back so, to the second letter. Right before you get there though, like what, that had to be a victory, right? Like after the 16, 16 for 16, dropped you got it warmed out and like the feedback came back like okay like how speak to that feeling and like that accomplish going into the 22nd letter yeah yeah i definitely felt like that 
gave me the confidence that I needed to like to want to continue to put out material. And and some of this, some of the material that is on 22nd Letter, honestly, was um, either sitting around kind of unfinished or, you know, started or there was, mm. you know, kind of some bones to it. But, um, you know, obviously, when I was kind of in that period of indecision, some of those things just kind of collected dust. But, um, you know, once I went, once I really decided, you know, that I was going to finalize it and put it out as a solo album, everything, I, you know, I went back and, and kind of redid things and, and finalized things and, and worked on, on pursuing different features and stuff too. You know, that was another decision I had to make was like, um, you know, did I want to continue making new connections and, and things like that? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, try to invest in, in, uh, different things to, to, to continue to gain reach and, and stuff like that. Like doing videos, doing, um, different collabs like the Rex and the Mickey Fax joint and even the mm -hmm. Raz Fresco joint. Um, you know, and all those, all those kind of came from different relationships too. kind of stem from different relationships too. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, you know, again, that kind of kept me motivated to stay in the game was like, you know, I got this music, I got these opportunities that I could work with these people. I got, you know, why, why shouldn't I try to put it together? You know, so that's kind of where I decided. And then once, once stuff, you know, started coming together, I, once, uh, you know, I, and then I kind of decided again to put out a single and like, I kind of held myself accountable really mm. down to it. You know, the same way I did with 16, 16 for 16, I, I put out a single for 20 second letter and I was like, this is, this is happening. So I kind of like put it out there to hold myself accountable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, like the feedback off the singles for that was good. So I felt, I felt really good about it. And then after I dropped it, I did a, a lot of, a lot of promo. Um, I, I did, promo like across seas in Europe and got a good response at one point um I almost was gonna go uh on a European tour but it didn't end up working out and then mm -hmm. obviously like things ended up going sideways uh you know yeah the point that we are now but anyhow um you know it was really dope to to kind of get that exposure off it too and that was another kind of confirmation and you know, some other opportunities sprung from that too. So overall, I'm, I'm happy that I continued to, to pursue it and didn't just, uh, you know, let those Chop tracks. Yeah, exactly. Let them sit on the computer to spin on a rainy day or something. And yeah, now nah, we, so. we definitely, I know I'm, <laughs> um, I might've not been at the time, but I'm definitely like happy to see that happen. Um, so 22nd letter drop, um, you got like some momentum. I start to see you're not just an MC or a producer. I see you diving in other things. You throwing events, um, DJing. Kind of speak to um how those things kind of birthed. Was it through um twenty second letter? Like, hey, let me dive, or was it just like kind of a I need I need to learn how to do this skill to do something. Um, I mean, it's a little bit of both is, uh, it, a lot was in the city, um, as far as like learning those skills at DJing and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give the disclaimer that I'm still rather novice at DJing. So I don't <laughs> want any real DJs friends to get mad at me, um, <laughs> like it's blasphemy, but, um, <laughs> anyhow, um, yeah, I, First of all, I got into running events. Uh, so I had some opportunities to run some different events, a couple different places. Um, ended up getting a kind of like a residency. Uh, what do you want to call it? Almost like a, almost like a residency. Yeah. We had a monthly, uh, monthly gig and, uh, you know, we were doing like first Fridays and, you know, sometimes we had Saturday, but anyhow, we had, we had good nights of the week. Mm -hmm. popular nights of the week where we mm -hmm. could get a crowd in Rochester <laughs> for hip hop show, not off nights that yeah. they like to get hip hop a lot of That don't happen. That don't happen. But <laughs> so to, you know, to have that event that, um, you know, we were able to have at, at Buddha pub, um, 
for that long. We had it re- really running for almost three years. Mm-hmm. Uh, consistency, consistency is key. And like, I felt like it was almost a resurgence of, um, you know, like when we had Dublin underground as, as home base, you know, it yeah, was like, yeah. it was like that, that definite place that you could go to see hip hop, to do your show, to go to your friend's show, whatever. Like it, it was, it was the stereotypical underground hip hop venue that you would see in a movie about underground hip hop, <laughs> you know? Facts, facts. So like, I, you know, I, I strongly felt like we had something special like that at Buddha pub, even though it was a little bit different kind of venue, but they, they gave us a uh, kind of free reign almost to mm-hmm. bring who we wanted and, and, you know, set up how we wanted. We almost could pick our dates most of the time and like having that freedom allow for all of this, this growth, um, as far as like networking and and the reach goes because you know we started doing things with people from buffalo and trade basically you know kind of trading shows with buffalo and having the same artists and then you know we got to the point where finally at the end before we you know were uh before the venue fell apart and and closed we were kind of to the point where we were about to route tours you know kind of through there and we all mm-hmm. basically set up a pipeline of like you know buffalo niagara falls even um rochester syracuse um right. and it, you know essentially having connections further down the line is the key even even chicago like you know i had a couple people from chicago on um and then actually had a couple people from boston on too so like right. the line just expands you know and that's the that was really uh the key to it, I think, and that was the best part about it, is mm-hmm. it kind of facilitated all these relationships and um, you know, even some of the people that are moving in upstate New York now, either I was just gonna say at Buddha Pub or or like you know, or, or at least familiar with it or were involved in it in some type of way, perform there, yeah. uh, whatever. So it's kind of dope to have been a part of that and, and help facilitate that. I was and, just gonna say we don't um because you you literally kind of got what's um, happening right now, specifically in the upstate movement. You kind of had that in in any kind of form or facet through your your event, um, which is big. Like yeah, it's dope. people don't really talk about it, but like you could talk your ish on that. Like that's something huge. Yeah, I, I you know honestly I we. Let's see. I'm trying to think. The times don't didn't exactly line up, but even even guys from like Griselda at the time were were kind of gettable and doable at that type of venue. And I almost wish right. we had it at the time. But uh, you know, re- regardless of that, I, they ended up coming to German House a little bit later as their um, you know appeal grew and, and grew mm-hmm. and grew. Um, they ended up doing a bigger show. But anyways, like you know, we had. We had rigs there um, from Rochester. We had Ito a couple of times, mm-hmm. um, you know, and a lot of other guys. We had Sonny up here. Um, we had Emilio uh, here. So, like, you know, different folks who represent Rochester, even if they're not here, um, mm-hmm. that have gone on to do different things and, and are continuing to do different things now. So, um, you know, it's dope. And even, like, Tony Boy from Buffalo, um, mm-hmm. that, you know, he was, he was a major connection, major reason that we had a pipeline of, of artists doing Buffalo and Rochester shows mm-hmm. and he's, you know, his hands are still in a lot of things too. Um, you know, and like Ma from Syracuse, um, again, like that connection was made kind of across I-90 man, you know, and like yeah. them continuing to do work together and, and, and grow is like, it's really dope to see. Okay. So. Yeah. You I had to speak to that. Um, yeah. So twenty eight that was that twenty eighteen twenty second letter. Um, yeah. Twenty sec oh not twenty second, twenty nineteen. Um what's up? What's going on? In twenty nineteen, what's going on? Yeah. Um probably I don't know, more personal garbage <laughs> than anything. <laughs> um I didn't put out anything in nineteen. Mm-hmm. Um I did a bunch of features, 
Um, I'm trying to think, 2019. I can't remember when. So after 22nd Letter, I had a couple different opportunities that I was part of in between okay. um, releasing that album and then my latest release. So I'll talk about a couple of those things. And I, excuse me if I don't exactly know the the release uh, dates of them. But um, so the one project I ended up being a part of uh, this guy named DJ Cliff from France. Uh, he hit me up off of hearing the album mm-hmm. and he uh he was like oh you know i wanted to send you some beats you know, i think you're dope and i was like all right cool and uh so this was uh like in maybe june or something like that and uh in july i ended up going for the brooklyn hip-hop festival mm-hmm. in new york city which is uh quite traditional you know you know mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> but uh so he, randomly he was in New York from France the same weekend. And uh, wow. I, had, I had done the record for him and sent it back to him. And he was like, uh, he just ran, he, he had no idea that I would, that I would be there, but he hit me and he was like, um, I'm going to be in New York city this weekend. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, I'm like I am too. He was like, so you want to <laughs> shoot a video for this, this record? I was like, all right, yeah. That's um, dope. Set it up. So we ended up I ended up meeting the guy and uh you know, he was really dope. He was there with his wife and everything. I was there with my my uh my girl at the time, now my fiance, but um you know, so we kind of spent a few hours uh taking shots for the video and then like he he took it home, put it all together, put it out and uh pull it up. So he ended up pressing uh yeah, it's the vinyl. But he did that. He did tapes. Of course, I had to get all of them. Oh, man. But um, and then he did videos for for I believe every song on the album, which is something that's really dope. Because yeah. you can literally go and just watch the whole album, and like I'm part of that, so that was really yeah. cool. That's uh, fine. And I'm on there with, with with really dope cats, and and even at the time, I had no idea who else was gonna be on the album, but like. You know, Rex ended up being on there, Rusty Jux, uh, Napoleon, the legend before, like early yeah. in his career. Like even he's he's like made a lot of noise in the past few years. Like it's, it's just. That's crazy. Guys, Ali, um, yeah, a lot of guys have like continued to do some good work since then. And like being on the being on a vinyl with them is is, is dope, like coming out. Yeah, of that's a so. dope step for the resume. Yeah, man. So I was I was like, that's definitely one thing I was excited about. And then um, I'll show you another one. Of course, I brought props. I don't know if anyone else is bringing props. Nah, you the first. You the props. first. That's the best. <laughs> you took, you're taking us to a new level, bro. <laughs> but yeah, no, like bad so, for the um, next interview. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so this is another vinyl that I ended up on. He actually just did this vinyl, but I think this came out. I think that he actually put the record out maybe in 2019. Okay. Um, but Body Bag Ben, uh, he's out of California. He's a producer. And he actually mm-hmm. raps too. Um, he just put out a collab project. It's a fire name. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Yo, yeah. I it's, it's, it's funny. He, like I say, I, I had gotten, um, you know, a lot of notoriety and like people hitting me up off of the 22nd letter me uh sharing it and promoting it mm-hmm. and he was another one of those guys that uh i think he had seen i think he had seen the rex video mm-hmm. and he had hit me up and he was like uh, i want to send you some beats and you know i want you to get on something and uh, i was like yeah absolutely and i had he was just kind of starting out you know like in his journey um as a producer and and like getting projects together okay um so anyways it was kind of another situation where i didn't even know necessarily where it would lead mm-hmm. um but I, it turns out i ended up being on the song with because i sent him a verse mm-hmm. and then he he built the track around that he had the hook in there and everything but uh he put a couple other people on there and then up ended up being daniel son from um from uh toronto i believe or, or somewhere around there up in Canada, Ontario, but uh, and then uh, this dude Smooth uh, from New York City, mm. and uh, and then the rest of the, the people on the on the project, a lot of really dope up and coming uh, 
artists as well. Even I believe even Riggs is on there. Um, but anyhow, like, again, kind of being part of a dope record and I, I actually really didn't expect it yeah. to be that, you know. Um, and then that was kind of one of his first introductory records to the scene. And since then, he's done a record with Ito, like, and he's worked with a bunch of other underground cats. So he's making his rounds too. Yeah. And, you know, I say that to say this is like, like, a, like we've been talking about, it's all about building those relationships and, um, you know, turning them into to dope opportunities and then making the most out of those opportunities. So, yeah, and you're in, you people, in the mix. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's been, if I say so myself, it, um, excuse the bias, but like, you know, it's, it, on that record in particular, that's one of the dopest records on there. Mm -hmm. And I've had people recognize and like, you know, send me messages like, yo, you know, I, this track is really dope. And, you, you know, you killed, killed the verse. And like, I'm like, awesome, dope. Cause I'm on there with, you know, cats that I respect and, and things right. like that. So that's just a dope feeling for me. Yeah. Yeah. So it, you wasn't necessarily quiet in 2019. Um, sounds like you had some, a bunch of things kind of, um, manifesting after 22nd letter that just kind of played out um so, it's yeah, another, so pardon so so mc speaking i didn't put out a project but um we put out a collab project um me and crotona p mm. called mvp so yeah kind of the kind of the switch gears um, as I was just going to say, even before that, I was more in my producer bag, I guess. I stepped, not stepped back from MCM, but I wasn't as focused on, um, on rapping, I guess. And I think part of that was because of, like I mentioned, when you first asked me, I was dealing with different stuff in my, uh, excuse me, my personal life mm -hmm. that kind of kept my pen at bay, mm. you know, as far mm -hmm. as like, being satisfied with what I was writing or what I was writing about, or I didn't feel like it was the time to write, I guess. I don't know. Right, so I just right. focused and switched gears and, and, and kind of went in the producer bag. So um, consequently, part of me doing that led me to uh, connect with Cortona P and mm -hmm. to even connect back to your last question when we talked about Buddha Pub, um, you know, me connecting with him is, is really another connection that was uh, solidified at Buddha Pub. Um, dope dude, by the way. Awesome. Like, shout out to yeah, P. Yeah, man. man. Yo, shout out to P. I, 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 yeah, definitely shout out to P. I'm going to get into that uh, that dynamic a little more, too. But, um, you know, so him and I connected on that level, and and uh, I believe he had, he had performed there for one of the shows, and he killed it, man. And he was doing joints. I think he performed with a couple other people, but, um, you know, he was doing dope, really dope records, man. And I was really just impressed by like his, um, like Mike presence and then, and then his content too, because it was real, um, grown and like, yeah, that's the perfect you know, it word. Just, yeah. It was like word. grown, but like commanding, but like, like, uh, I don't know, man. It, it, like, like, Spontaneous. It's like the OG you want to listen to. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, come here, let me tell you. Because <laughs> I seen some, so let me tell you. Like, mm -hmm. I got, you know, I got that from him. And then, but then, like, getting to know him, you know, once we connected and, and started uh, doing records and he was down with the idea, um, you know, off of uh, knowing me and, and, and seeing me and seeing us even in, mm -hmm. in action before, you know, we'd always kind of been around each other, but we hadn't, uh, connected, connected. that mm -hmm. level so um once we started making music together and and uh you know started having sessions and and just building getting to know him was was dope and you know at the same time uh, not to put all his business out there but you know he's family man he's got kids you know mm -hmm. been through it seen it rap about it um mm -hmm. but like real talented uh incredible pen like dope flow like uh, he's from the Bronx so he's got you know that the, the New York everything about uh, yeah. a Bronx rapper that you know you you would expect um but then like it gives you that that personal aspect so like 
that was part of what intrigued me about working with him. And, and my challenge is always like bringing out uh, different, different, uh, the best in people and, and different aspects of people. So like, and even in some of the production that I um, gave him right off the bat, you know, he was like, you know, this is different than other stuff that, you know, producers send me. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I got a lot of different stuff in the bag, you right, know? Right. Um, and that's, that's kind of, even though that wasn't the first time I produced like a full record for somebody, mm-hmm. um, that was when I kind of was like, I think I want to make this like a focal point going forward. You yeah, know, like yeah. This, that was the first time I was like, I want to continue to do this with other people too. Cause I like this hat, you know, I like being in the producer chair. I liked, I rap on one track. Cause that's part of my, that's part of my calling card. I think. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. I'm going to be like, Rock, I need a Rock verse. Is, yeah. I'm going to be like Rochester's is Apollo Brown, but I got to rap <laughs> on every project. Um, <laughs> or, but uh, anyways, P Rock used to do that too. That's probably why. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was. I, I, if you don't mind, I kind of want to um step away from music for a second. Um, no doubt, no doubt. Kind of because the one thing that um again the world haven't been privy to know is kind of who you are. Um, and. I've I've grown to know you from a period and then we didn't have a period where we was apart. Um we had our fallen whatever we want to call it. Um but during that period we kind of both grown. Um yeah, we, we, we we got families. Um you <laughs> you now soon to be a husband. Yeah, um man. I so like kind of speak to you don't have to get like into direct situations, but speak to some of that growth during that period too, and kind of how that affected some of the moves you made. Because, because like the reason I brought it up is, um, Cortona kind of sounded like he, um, not he, not only did you produce a project for him, he was able to kind of like, OG you in a sense, kind of like give you some of that OG wisdom, and it sounds like it kind of played in some of your growth. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man, definitely, like. Um, you know, I think the music and um, kind of being in the same room with and, and just talking to some. I mean, <laughs> it's funny how like we maybe don't put enough stock in in just talking sometimes. You know, yeah, like just, just 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 shooting the ish. You know, um, so I think it was part of that, man. And and, and you know what I'm saying it was. You know, that was definitely part of it, you know, our sessions and, and even my sessions that I have with like Golden, who is a close friend, and but then somebody I work with musically close, you know, like mm-hmm. we have those type of relationships where like we just we just talk and like, you know, before the music, we, we you know, we still homies and regular people with lives and stuff, too. So right. Event and all that. And, and, and that's all important. Um but like, man, as far as, uh, as far as like that growth period, you know, um, from like 15 to, to now, um, yeah, it was a lot of different things that, uh, that I dealt with personally. Um, you know, being a father is a, is a big, big part of me. Um, I mean, my son's going to be nine in uh, shoot, about two weeks. Jesus. And, uh, you know, like I say, in, in the bars, man, it's like since he was born, I would have him in, in the studio with me. And, and mm-hmm. um, you know, that's my heart. So um, that's been first and foremost <clears throat> in, you know, my mission mm-hmm. uh, as an adult, as a man, as a father, you know, making sure that that part is, uh, is taken care of and, and in the right order. So, um, you know, uh, have my, my share of, uh, I don't know what you want to call them struggles with, uh, battles, battles with the, the system and circumstances, which, you know, we don't have to necessarily get into that because it's messy and, and whatnot. But the fact that, you know, the fact of the matter is, is, being a father is probably the, the number one, first and foremost thing that I do. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, just having to 
refocus on that, I think part of like, I don't know, I'm probably getting into way too much, but like, nah, nah, <laughs> not at all. And the I reason think, I say that is like we got to celebrate that. Um, specifically, you know, we come from an era of musicians and artists that man, we 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 covered up so much, we dealt with so much, we took in so much, and we just masked it through music and substances and all types of other stuff. So to hear, to be able to look back at it, first of all, is a blessing. But to speak on it, just so I'm, because in my head I'm thinking about the little so and so that's listening to this and trying to get into music, and he's like, he in his head, he he only sees it as I gotta rap, drink, smoke this and that and not nah, it's other ways so i, I want to encourage you to continue on about how fatherhood is first yeah 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 um yeah i mean i don't know i've said it in my songs too like i want to and then I've, I've actually said this to my son too like i want to show you that you know you it's important that you uh, don't let go of things that make you happy and sacrifice things that make you happy or things that you're passionate about. It's important to like, um, like I tell my son, you know, right now he's big into, um, he wants to get into more streaming and, 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 you know, making his own videos. And I'm like, cool. Like, you know, some people might look at that as, ah, you know, I don't want to get into that too much, but I'm like, <laughs> how can I stoke that flame and like give him these skills, not only right. to do something that he enjoys now as a kid, but like then can take those skills later and apply to something, yeah. something bigger or like, you know, maybe that's, that becomes a passion and, and that, you know, sparks his entire, uh, Whatever. Flame, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. so that's kind of my, philosophy and like i don't know I, I just i don't personally think that i'd ever feel right or like complete totally walking away from music like being creative i don't i don't know i mean may, maybe someday but like right now i can't see it even in the foreseeable future like mm -hmm. i can't even I, I mean listen i've this studio that i'm sitting in right now I've been in this house. I've, I've, I bought this house 10 years ago. And I first thing I did was put the studio here. You know, I can't even imagine not waking up and having a studio in my basement. Right, right, <laughs> Basically, right. And if you want to go even further back than that, when I, the first time I hung that mic in my bedroom. Right, <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So it's really been a long time of of having that outlet. So... Yeah. I don't know. I just believe in, in, in you know, pursuing the, the passions. And, and like I said, it's all about that growth, man, because you, you got to experience different things. So, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, with my son, man, he's he played the he tried the drums. He tried the piano. Yeah. Like, whatever, whatever you want to try, because something's going to hit, you know, and at the very least, even if it doesn't, you can still say that you did it. Facts. So, Facts. I don't know. I'm definitely oh, that's experiences and, and whatnot. That's powerful. And I think that's like, that's good and important for um, not just musicians, just for people to know. Like, um, I, I think I was saying it in Clubhouses a couple of nights ago that um, we kind of got to change or realize what our measure of success is because what one's man like you may be striving for what you think mansions and tons of cars and so on and so forth when ultimately you might just be happy with a nice little spot go car and some people that love you like <laughs> that's exactly it bro i mean that's that's the key right there and and um uh, that is, uh, that's, that's kind of part of my journey too, you know, because I even changed careers in there during this, this time. Mm -hmm. um, and it hasn't been easy <laughs> due to, due to many factors, you know, right. personally and economically or, or, or so sociologically, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely been a challenge, but like, staying the course is important and ultimately you know where i could probably say you know if you'd asked me five years ago 
um, you know, quit your job right now and you think you would be completely straight and just do music and you, you would be completely straight. And I would be like, Oh my God, absolutely not. Um, you know, there's no, no way I could do that. I would, I would be lost. <laughs> right. And like, right. I, but ironically, like, you know, I ended up essentially kind of doing that and, and trying to go my own path as far as like doing my own thing and entrepreneurship and it ended up in real estate. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I guess I'm not dead, you know. No. I'm still here and alive <laughs> and, and, and thriving. So I guess at the end of the day, I could say I was. I guess I'm. I was right, or at least maybe I'm still Usually in progress. Successful. But I feel I feel like I'll be able to say it was it was a, not a total failure. <laughs> yeah. No. No. I mean. I could say hugely successful in in a lot of ways. Um, and then you just striving for more. But I just just looking at it now and just know who you are, you can always see you becoming your own entity, your own something, like some type of business. So um it's kind of dope to be able to see that happen. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah. we we're going into 2020. Um and you you got some growth going on. What's uh what what was 2020 like for you? Come on, bro. Come on, man. Um, it was definitely a roller coaster. What's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, so it was definitely a roller coaster, man. Um, in March, kind of things for me in real estate, I thought we're gonna pick up, you know, I have mm-hmm. really good prospects in, in real estate. Um, cause I've been working on that for the past, uh, year or so. And, uh, so I thought I was going to go into this spring market, like really hitting the ground running and, 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 and going in. And, uh, obviously when that hit, it, they, they, they told us to, uh, you know, stay home. So we couldn't really do much there. And, uh, that was a little bit debilitating at, at the time, you know, it was like, man, that kind of let the air out of things. But, um, I don't know. It, it gave me more time to reflect on, you know, how thankful I am for the people that I have around me and, mm. you know, the home that I've created. Um, you know, I can say something like, um, if this would have happened, you know, in a different year under different circumstances, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't have survived or, or, or like, you know, it wouldn't have been, um, I don't know, as uh, as seamless as it, it seemingly has been for us. You know, I know it's affected everybody differently, but, yeah. you know, um, I'm just thankful for having the roof over my head and then the space that I just mentioned. Obviously, if you tell me to stay home, I'm going to come right down here. Right, so, right. Um, you know, I've had opportunity to be down here and, um, you know, still be able to do the right. things that I love. And and even be able to to do end up doing my other work, my real estate stuff from home. So, you know, it's kind of been a blessing. I think we've, um, you know, we've experienced this uh, this change that's going to be with us forever, as far as uh, how we change the workforce and how people work um, in a lot of ways. So, you know, and that was kind of something that I looked for, um, and even changing careers was was being able to be more flexible, man. That's why I wanted to to work for myself and like uh that's why I, I ended up in real estate and, and so on yeah. and so forth you know i wanted to be able to to control my own destiny and, and eat what you kill so to speak so <laughs> so i don't I'm and i'm sure you can see it now it that sounds like the beginning of upstates man and the inspiration behind that content and that project um you want to go a little deeper or how Cause you put that out the what December of this year? Uh, or I, last put year? Up, I put it up in uh on Thanksgiving Day actually. Okay, okay. I put it up on my band camp and then I I just kind of snuck it on to the DSPs right before end of the year. But uh um so yeah, that the the title is definitely uh kind of a testament to like how I feel about representation of the region and and uh you know my intent is uh wasn't to say that like it's just me like i'm i'm the upstatesman or whatever it's kind of like you know 
almost a moniker of saying, you know, if you're in the scene and you're um, promoting the scene and you're, you know, building the scene, then, you know, you're upstatesman, you're, you're a supporter of the movement, the, mm-hmm. kind of the, the culture here. And I, and I do feel like we have kind of a distinct um, you know, hip hop culture up here. In this region, uh, that's unique. Been, yeah, 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 and it's only been amplified by um, you know the success of the current movements of of, a, of some of the movements up here. So, yeah, yeah man. I, so I definitely felt strongly that um, well, that was kind of the statement I wanted to make, and uh, the sound of the album, even in the way that I put it together, I distinctly. Uh, I, I, the track list has so many different forms over mm-hmm. the past couple years, mm-hmm. but I wanted to make sure that everything on there was just real gritty because I felt like, you know, that's kind of representative of the sound. Um, and then, you know, at the same time, true to my, myself, the content isn't, you know, straying from who I am or you know, anything like that. So um, it's still, it's raw MCing and you know, uh, microphone prowess, yeah. and, you know yeah. what I'm saying. But uh, it mixed with the production, so you know. And then at the same time, I kind of snuck in some of those same connections to represent exactly what I'm what I'm talking about. You know, like I mentioned, Tony Boy and Moff before that kind of Buffalo to Syracuse right. connection. And, you know, having them on a track together with me. Um, kind of represents that to me, um, you know, and then having Golden on the track and then having somebody like um, Curtis Coke, a.k.a. L.I., who's a Rochester legend, I think. Royalty. Um, you know what I'm saying? So having, you know, those people on and then obviously having Cortona P on, who, um, you know, was in the fold and we just did the project together, you know, and obviously he, it's funny, actually, that, that verse that he gave me um, for that song at the time, he was talking so much about retiring from rap <laughs> like that. in that verse. He's talking about it too. And I was at the time when he came and recorded it, I was like, I'm like, Oh man, I got the last, like the, I got the retirement verse. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got the, the finale, the final hold, but then he had, he hold me though. So <laughs> started recording music again, but at least he records with me. So I get to hear it. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, no, I, um, yeah. and I think I told you that like this project sounds like you develop, like you finally develop your style. Like, be sonically how he's gonna sound and I, I think it's amazing it's definitely my favorite project of yours um Thank you, it's just, i think over and i was just gonna say i think you know over time um especially recording and mixing you know after you know after 2015 and after that when i focus more on um recording other people and then solo stuff and then producing other albums for people like um we didn't get into when i did the out the ep for kes the prelude you know, mm. um uh was that 2017 um before 22nd excuse me 22nd letter drop um but you know i had continued to mold even my sound and like recording and mixing and like um you know how i put records together and even like mastering how chopping up, you know, the beats and tracking out beats and, and doing different things. Like, I feel like I kind of mastered the art of arrangement even. Yeah, you know, no, absolutely. The song more. Um, but yeah, it's all, a, you know, it's all a collection of, of skills that uh, we, we started doing 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, literally, basically, about 15 years ago. Yeah, that, dang, yep. I mean, 2005 is, well, as far as you and I go anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, like, I, I really don't got much more, but this is special, Um. first of all, like, the fact that we, we hear... Yeah, bro, this, this, this could be, like, 12 hours. Bro. Facts, <laughs> facts. Um, especially this on this platform... Surface. Since it, since it, like it is special, I, I didn't want to overlook it. I I wanted to give you an opportunity to see like if you had any questions to, to throw my way, 
or just anything that um we 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 maybe we didn't cover because I don't really got much more on my agenda, but I, just the fact that it is me and you um wanted to throw it your way to see if you you know whatever. Yeah. Um. Oh man, I know you put me on the spot now. <laughs> um, Let's see. Oh, I got it. As a matter of fact, looking at you right now, I got a great question. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you were looking at me like this with the kid on my lap, yeah. <laughs> did you yeah. ever see yourself in the same position? Heck no. Nah. Not at that time anyway. No, nah, right? man. I, I um I don't know if it's a bad thing. I and you know, I I didn't think about the um the permanent things like I, I spent a lot of my life I didn't think about like family marriage um financially I didn't even think about like stashing the right way stuff like that so I, I spent a lot of time just kind of um blowing by week to week waking up day to day kind of hoping not trying to find my way into things so when this became permanent and realized I couldn't give it back yeah no I, I instantly thought about Aiden um, running through the studio when he was born and all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, uh, it's definitely, it's funny. It's full circle. Absolutely. Um, let's see, another thing, this isn't a question, more so, uh, uh, I don't know, a big up, a compliment. Um, I appreciate how uh, you've branched off and done so many different things and, and tried your hand and, and, you know, tried to get into so many different things like the photography, like the videography and now the podcast. And, you know, um, I feel like, you know, we were always like that, you know, trying to do every little niche. And like, we always yeah. kind of believed that collectively, you know, that I got was, a lot of it from a you, good thing, a good thing to do. So I wasn't trying to imply that, but I no, I hope I, I, hope I, I you that way. <laughs> I remember the moment, literally, like oh nine grind. I'm never gonna forget that. That was our moniker. Like that was, was the, oh, yeah, was going hard. But one going yeah. into that, I just remember the. I don't know if you remember that convo you had with me about time, and you kind of had it with me recently too. Like, like, hey, my time is valuable. Like, we, we if we're gonna use this time, we got to use it right. And um, that that always stuck with me, man. So like. Going into 2015 and all of that, it, we kind of had a lot of the similar same paths, but it was a lot of moments where like, I want to do this, but I don't have that. So let me learn this. Let me learn yep. that. And yeah. I didn't that, know how much I would love videography, but holy moly. <laughs> yeah, man. That was exactly kind of part of your question earlier in, in like the DJ, man. It's like we kind of learned learn certain things out of necessity and circumstance and then you know that's how we kind of find things but um yeah, so, yeah just you know go ahead no I, you had anything else uh no not not particularly like i um, said we could go on tangents forever yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I got like another ten things, but I'm a, we 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 could close it up because I don't want to keep you too late. So the way I end them is is two questions, and it's it's simple. Um, what would you tell a stranger to encourage them? And um, it, it could be in any situation, any ideal. It doesn't have to be like your your script. Just if you found somebody that really needed some encouragement. Um, man, I would say. Look at the people who are deterring you from what your goals are or, you know, the things that you're passionate about and stop focusing on them. Mm, <laughs> mm, that's um, powerful. You know, I think that it's easy to get into your own head after you keep yourself in a position where either people don't want you to do something or don't believe you could do something. It's easy to get into your own head. So if you got the, if you got the passion for it, then you push forward and make it happen and get those people out of your way. And then if you had a friend that you needed to encourage, 
what's one thing you would tell them? Oh, man. Probably a lot of the same, but um, I don't know. It depends what they're going through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get you. I get you. Um. So lastly, well, um, what's a, if you want to hint at a couple of things you got for the 2021 and then the, um, let the people know where they can find you, your socials, um, your websites, things of the sorts. Got you. Um, well, for 2021, uh, I'm going to be doing more production work. Um, I've got a couple things on the cusp of being done. Um, I'm going to announce them shortly. So I might as well yeah. give you exclusive anyways. Um, yes. <laughs> so I got First exclusive. <laughs> I got uh, almost a whole project done with Golden. Mm. Um, so I've been spinning that a lot. It's a solid like 10 tracks, um, all my production. I still got to get a verse on there. So that's one of the last things. And then we got <laughs> up a couple features, but like it, it's, it's sounding real 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 dope man. that's and, uh, crazy so i'm definitely excited about that and then uh another one that's in these i'm excited about both of these because they're they're both from all my production with two different mcs from rochester um but they the sounds and the content is totally different you know so that they're, they're gonna like you know, they're not gonna sound the same they're gonna be two mm-hmm. completely different bodies of work um so the other one is is with reggie royale Ooh, the homie yeah, man, That's and I, I, I know you. But you guys have been talking recently too a lot. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So you know, he's another guy that, like, you know, I mentioned just having those studio sessions with, like, um, you know, him and I have talked a lot. Yeah, you just, guys really have similar paths when I think about it. No. Well, yeah, and that's exactly <laughs> some of the stuff that we talked about. You know, uh, as far as uh, being yeah. being fathers and and dealing with certain things. So. Um, but anyhow, him and I have, you know, had similar conversations, just like just like me and Cretona P uh, had in the process of making our, our album. So, you know, we've connected again as on a, on a grown man level. And, yeah. You know, not only gotten in the studio and, and just done music, but just talked about life, too. So that's yeah. like I mentioned earlier, just another um, dope outlet, man. And, and I think especially as as men and you know, as much as it's stigmatized not to talk, you know, it's just been good to to, to just oh. talk and be real, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's definitely a huge part of my growth recently and, Mine you know, too. something that now I'm trying to instill not only in my, my son, but, you know, just being real with, with other grown men too. Nice. <laughs> you know, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say I had a strong relationship with Reggie prior to starting to do this album, but like we found common ground and like we talked about, we had some pretty real conversations, you know, but I appreciate mm-hmm. that. And I, and I know that he did too. Um, and I think sometimes we don't necessarily have enough of that and enough outlets maybe for that. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then at the same time, it's, 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 we agree that it's creating some dope music. So yeah, you know, that's best the, music is I think is formed. Well, some of the best music is formed out of community. For sure. All right, bro, man. I I, so, I, I love yeah, you. I oh yeah, my yeah, bad. I love you too, bro. I didn't. I, let me hold on. Let me finish my my plugs. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna keep it easy though. Everything you can find me everywhere at I am volatile. Um, v o l a t i l e. I am volatile dot com will take you to the Bandcamp page, and uh, that's got. I think almost all the releases on it. Yeah. Um, I got to do a couple updates to the Spotify. There's a, I got to re re upload uh, the Kess Prelude project, but getting, that's another goal of mine this year is to uh, make sure that my whole catalog is organized on all the platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's something I'm putting some energy into too. Um, Cause you know, like I, like I mentioned, my plan is to continue doing these, these releases and have this this producer body of work, you know, kind of live with my MC body of work. And the intent is really to, you know, be able to feed and draw fans off of both, you both. know? Yeah, yeah. 
whether people are looking on the production side and they find me via the artists I work with or they find me as an MC and then get into my production work, you know. Um, I just believe in having all the different pipelines coming in, man. So always been a man with many hats, man. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So that was this was fire, man. This, this was, was fire. fire um I, I, again, it's I, not the longest uh, one. Hopefully, it's not the longest episode. I think it is at the Probably moment. It, it, it's, it's, it's cool. It's definitely cool. That's that's why I want to ask, just because um, the time frame. I didn't want to be like limited to restricted. Yeah, yeah. Um, who knows what this may grow into? But um, I'm definitely enjoying it at the moment. But again, I, and I'm gonna say it again. I love you, bro. I appreciate. Yeah, I love you too, man. I, I love who you become. Who you becoming? Um. 2021 is going to be magical. And uh, thank you for doing the Friends of Strangers podcast, bro. Absolutely, bro. We're back to working out next week, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. (laughs)